Jesse Hagopian from the International Socialist Organization. I love saying that word. And he is a popular educator here in Seattle, does a lot of truly amazing work. Jesse is, is an incredible renaissance guy and we're lucky to have him in our community. And come on up here, Jesse, and say a few words. Thank you, Tim, and, and Real Change for having me. Let me share my perspective on, on these issues today. I am Jesse Hagopian, teacher at Garfield High School, a member of the International Socialist Organization and the Social Equality Educators, and I've been told that today I'm not addressing homeless people. I've been told today that I'm not addressing homeless advocates. I've been told today that I'm addressing criminals. I've been, I heard this from people who put a bill forward in this city that wanted to criminalize what they called aggressive panhandling, right? I heard that I'm addressing criminals today from the Pioneer Square quote unquote community association that tried to keep the sinister organization of real change news out of Pioneer Square because they said it would attract the wrong kind of people like you all, right? Yeah. I heard that I was addressing criminals today uh, from the Committee to End Homelessness in King County, really, that considers it acceptable to poli use police officers as social service providers when they address people in uh, the homeless encampments. And where did I hear you all are criminals? I heard it because our city is getting ready to spend $200 million to build a new juvenile detention center that will greatly expand the number of beds uh, that they will need to fill to jail our youth. All at the same time, they're getting ready to build a new publicly financed stadium in this city all at the same time that they have cut every single school counselor from the elementary school level in our city. But if you all are criminals here today, then I am a criminal as well. Because I have the wrong skin color. I have the wrong skin color in a city where the Department of Justice released a report that said one out of every five arrests in our city is a violation of constitutional rights in a city that was shown by the federal agency to have a disproportionate use of force on people of color, right? In a city that I think is best described by what Michelle Alexander called the new Jim Crow, because this city can shoot down our homeless brother John T. Williams in the street and have his perpetrator go free without any criminal charges, right? I say we live under a system of new Jim Crow in this city because we have a police officer caught on tape saying he's gonna kick the Mexican piss out of an innocent man on the street and then that, that officer goes free, right? I say this is a system of new Jim Crow of racial control when you can have a police officer punch a 16 year old girl in the face for jaywalking, it's caught on video and nothing is done. And when you have a system of racial control that's put together with a system of mass inequality, you have a completely broken system. You have a creates criminals out of all of us, right? I'm a criminal just simply because my father isn't a banker, my mother isn't a CEO. As Credence Clearwater Revival said, I'm not a senator's son. Because if I was a banker or a politician, Almost anything I did would be legal. Let's look at Wells Fargo that was recently indicted for systematically raising interest rates on black families and people of color in their lending and they got a slap on the wrist. They got a fine for this. No jail time. We haven't seen a single banker uh, behind bars for scandal after financial scandal. Meanwhile, our prisons are filling with poor, with the homeless, and with people of color. And so, 
I'm here to say that in a society, when you have 400 people in America, 400 people have as much wealth as the bottom 185 million of us in this country. And I hope I didn't offend all of you who came to this protest today in your private jet. And it, I hope I don't offend anybody who came to the protest with their limousine uh, chauffeured ride. But I oppose a social order that can have this level of inequality, I think that's the greatest obscenity we can have. And so I think that until the Committee to End Homelessness in King County decides to take up a struggle for social justice, its name will be nothing more than a public relations slogan. I think that if the Committee to End Homelessness wants to end homelessness, it needs a political strategy for fighting inequality. I think that if the Committee to End Homelessness mission is simply impossible as long as the richest 1% have more than half of the income in America and they need a political strategy to redistribute the wealth in America, they need to join the Occupy movement to be part of that. Their mission is simply impossible as long as we have a nation that uses $100,000 a minute to bomb people in the Middle East, but not to rebuild here at home. And the project of ending homelessness is not some enigma that cannot be solved or some very difficult mathematical equation, lack of political will that can't be found. We know today two things sit side by side. The greatest contradiction in our society today, I would argue, is that there are 3.5 million homeless people in our nation today at the same time that we have 18.5 million vacant homes in our country. For every homeless person in America, there are five empty homes. The solution is simple. It's about the political will to make it happen, to end homelessness. And to do that, we will need nothing short of a civil rights movement to put pressure on these politicians to fill those vacant homes with people who need the help. And this is what I want to end my time with here today. That unless there is struggle, there is no progress. And unless the Committee to End Homelessness joins our struggle. There will be no progress towards ending homelessness. And I think Eugene Debs really said it best and I want on his words. Eugene Debs is one of my heroes, an incredible leader of the socialist movement at the early part of the 1900s. And he was arrested when he opposed World War I they arrested him under the Sedition Act for speaking out against a war that killed millions. And at his trial, he said these words that I think should serve as our inspiration here today. In front of the judge, he said this, I am opposing a social order in which it is possible for one man who does absolutely nothing that is useful to amass a fortune of hundreds of millions of dollars while millions of men and women who work all the days of their lives barely secure enough for a wretched existence. This order of things cannot always endure. I have registered my protest against it. I recognize the feebleness of my effort, but fortunately I am not alone. There are multiplied thousands of others who, like myself, have come to realize that before we may truly enjoy the blessings of civilized life, we must recognize society upon a mutual and cooperative basis. And to this end, we have organized a great economic and political movement that spreads over the face of this earth. Your Honor, I love that he stops and calls the judge Your Honor. Years ago, I recognized my kinship with all living beings. And I made up my mind that I was not one bit better than the meanest on earth. I said then and I say now that while there is a lower class, I am in it. While there is a cr criminal element, I am of it. And while there is a soul in prison, I am not free. 
Those are the words that I think our movement should live by, and those are the words that I believe the Committee to End Homelessness must recognize and must take up if their committee is to be anything more than a simply public relations stunt to pretend that they are doing something for our movement. And I hope you all take that message to their office tomorrow and don't leave until we have a real plan to turn this city upside down and make it something that serves working people and the homeless and not simply the billionaires, not simply the real estate agents in this city. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was awesome. Can I get another hell yeah? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah. <laughs> All right.